Hello, my name is Amelie Senek, and our team is going to be talking about the electric car. The electric car, the history, it all began in around the 1890s. There is no selected inventor, per se, about that started the electric car. But the first electric car to go and run through the streets of the United States is the is, was made by William Morrison, and it was a six passenger wagon that would go up to speeds of 14 miles per hour. In the 20th century, the car, the electric car started to get competition. There was gas vehicles, there was steam vehicles, and electric cars being distributed among the United States, where the electric car still was very popular because the steam vehicles would start off very slowly and would take up to 45 minutes to even start running and the gasoline vehicle was very difficult to maneuver and so a lot of people weren't able to you know just drive it because of all the gears and everything it had so the electric car was still a very viable option in the time until that is until 1908 where Thomas Edison came out with the Model T and it brought great competition to electric cars the Model T, what was special about it was that it eliminated the hand crank, making it much easier to start out and to maneuver this vehicle. And so that's why by 1912, the average cost of a gasoline vehicle was $650, compared to an electric vehicle, which was $1,750, which made the electric vehicle kind of just fade away. And so... Now we're going to have Eric Santana talking about the current designs in the electric vehicle. For the current design of the electric car, it's a very simple concept. You basically have your motor, your controller, and your batteries. The way these work is for your batteries, they supply a, a constant power. The controller determines how much of the power is actually sent to the motor uh, via the accelerator pedal. This is Basically, this the same thing I was just describing. You have your accelerator pedal controls your actual DC controller, which, like I said, it between the voltage of the battery, it'll send it to your DC motor, and that is how the power will move. Similar concept, the AC design. This is the design that is actually used in majority of these new electric cars. They have similar concept. You have your accelerator pedal to your controller. You have your 12 volt accessory battery, which is what you have in your current gasoline powered car today. And your, your actual battery pack, which is installed in the car to supply the actual voltage to your AC motor, which goes to your transmission. The problems with this design, the biggest issues that come with the electric cars are its battery, the limited amount of charging stations, the time it takes to charge, as well as its overall cost. For example, the battery. On majority of these electric cars, the maximum range you can go is 100 miles. Most gas-powered cars can go over 350 miles. These batteries are also heavy and bulky, which affect the cost of the car as well as having a negative effect with weight. Like I said, they are expensive. When you have some of these batteries, they are 3 feet by 1.5 feet and they weigh upwards of 1,200 pounds, they have a very negative effect on the weight of the actual electric car itself. Also, with the advancements they've been trying to make, especially in the chemical area, to get these batteries of a higher quality so that they can get cars move a lot further distances, they have a safety issue. For example, Tesla has the lithium ion battery that has had a couple of issues with fires breaking out during transit. Charging stations. There's less than 10,000 charging stations in the US and you compare that to 121,000 gas stations around the US. The, the lack of convenience is one thing that is really killing the electric car. They're opening less in the past two years and overall there have been many complaints of the charging quality. They also, another issue is the time it takes to charge. For these cars that are averaging 100 miles per charge, it takes 16 to 20 hours to actually get a full 100% charge. 
The other downfall is they have rapid charging stations. 30 minutes to charge gets you 80%. The same principles as above, they're very limited. You don't have very many. There's a very few in California and New York, so they're just hard to come by to get that kind of quality. Now for the actual cost, these cars with these inconveniences are still very expensive. For example, you have a 2014 Nissan Leaf and a Chevy Bolt, respectively 30 and 35,000. The upper scale Tesla model that most people know about is between 70 and 93. The downfall of this is you can get a simple gas powered vehicle from Honda or Kia that ranges in the 20 to mid 20s without the inconveniences that you would be suffering from an electric car. Now Emily is going to finish off with future developments. So the future developments for the electric vehicle are to better the battery, to change the charging methods, and to design new different developments for the outside, the motor. So the batteries, they're thinking of in around five years or so, the lithium batteries with silicone based cathodes, which will increase the energy density to 100, 100 watt hours per kilogram. And these batteries are gonna weigh 220 pounds and they're gonna have a mile range of 150 miles. Um, also in the future, they're also thinking and they're exploring into lithium sulfur, lithium air, and lithium salt water, but that's like from 10 to 15 years from now. And those are projected to weigh around 350 pounds and they have a 600 mile range, right? So the changes in the, in the charging for the electric vehicle are hopefully going to have a standard minimum of 100 kilowatts in each charging station. That means that for every minute that the car is going to be charging, it's going to have a six mile range. In 30 minutes, the car is going to be able to have a 360 mile uh, drive. So also, something very important that's going to hopefully take place is that they're going to start putting induction mats into the parking lots and into the garages and that, that makes it easy for the car to, to be charging and the driver's not gonna have to worry about plugging it in. What the induction mats does is that once you're parked, it's gonna be charging it instantly and wirelessly. Meaning for any trip, unless you're gonna take a long trip, you're, you're never gonna have to actually go and plug in your car to anything. And that's it for the electric vehicles.